Hello everybody and welcome to today's Sunday Sermon, which is on the sixth Sunday in Easter time. And today, Jesus promises the disciples, the apostles, that he will send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And today we're looking at the effects of the Holy Spirit, because that is what we can only observe, is the effects. Like the wind, we know it's there, but we can't see it. We know it's there because the trees shake. But the same with the Holy Spirit. You see the changes of the actions of people and how they are responding in a godly way to this life and its challenges especially. Some definitions of the Holy Spirit are, it's a burning in the bosom. It also, another uh, definition is, the Holy Spirit inspires, inspires us. If we call in our time of need. The other evidence of the Holy Spirit is the way people give of their lives for the good of others. Of course, I'm thinking of priests, nuns, brothers, lay folk who go on the missions, lay folk who go out on the streets at night and help, and those who go to zones and areas that have disasters like earthquakes and so forth. And they go there as humanitarian workers. This is the power of the Holy Spirit as well. And even though people may not claim or say that it's because I want to serve God or God is teaching me or pushing me to go and do like what I'm doing, they still are wanting to do good in this world. And that is what the Spirit does as well. It helps us and pushes us to do good in this life. In moments of crisis, you see people do great things. People who are hurt and who have been hated and who know how to forgive. And they only can do that because of the Holy Spirit, the love of God, in other words. It's the same thing, you know. And you know, the Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, which is a, is a, a, a very pious terminology, but it means that it's God we are talking about, how God is, is sanctifying us, another pious word, but making us better people, more like Him in our lives. So we also see in people who have gone before us what they have done with their lives and how they have even died for Christ. We see the first martyr was Saint Stephen. And Saint Stephen was accosted and cross-examined by very elderly people and people with high positions in society to explain what he was on about, this risen Christ. But they could not stand up against the wisdom that the Spirit gave Stephen as he spoke. In fact, his face shone like that of an angel. And we know that he was stoned to death. But the Spirit is evident there in the way he was able to dumbfound his adversaries. A man who is not Catholic and who everybody liked was Billy Graham. Billy Graham said one time, 
that the Holy Spirit illuminates the minds of people, makes us yearn for God, and takes spiritual truth and makes it understandable for us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And I think he's right. A great saint in England was St. Thomas More. He refused to endorse Henry VIII's desire to divorce Catherine of Aragon. And later on, he declared himself head of the church when he found that the Pope was disagreeing with him. St. Thomas More was beheaded because of his beliefs. He was a very high up official, higher, higher than the Prime Minister. He was Lord Chancellor of Great Britain. So this was big news and a huge, a huge event that Thomas More went against the great Henry VIII. On the 1st of July, 1535, Moore was beheaded on Tower Hill, proclaiming himself as the king's good servant, but God's first. We have an example in Africa where the Holy Spirit has inspired people as well. All of you listening and looking may know about the Ugandan martyrs, and there were many of them. One of them I'll just concentrate on, Kizito. Kizito was a young boy in his teenage years, but he was climbing in his society because he was appointed to the court of the king. And he was making great headway. At the same time, he wanted to become a Catholic. And eventually, after a lot of persuasion of the priests, the missionary priests who came to preach the gospel in Uganda, they succumbed and they baptized Kizito. Now, St. Kizito was very high up in the rankings, very high up in the king's government. But the king was making lustful advances on Kizito, which Kizito refused vehemently. And because of that, he was sentenced to death. He walked all the way to a place called Namungongo, which was many miles of walking in chains, and was burned alive with other fellow Christians on the Ascension Thursday, the 3rd of June, 1886. Here is another example of the Holy Spirit giving people courage to stand strong for what is right and what is wholesome. Now, please God, none of us will ever be forced until the point of death. But in a sense, we remain faithful till our deaths in serving God and in listening to God's promptings in our hearts through his Holy Spirit. God is helping us and empowering us to live a life that radiates the goodness of God. Radiates his goodness. He's empowering us to live lives that radiates the goodness that God has. To show his goodness to the world. We should be aware of our need for divine help, which comes to us through the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier, the one that makes us holy. And holy doesn't mean 
pious and untouchable, but wholesome, outgoing, confident, inclusive of everyone that they meet. This is what we should desire and what we do desire really, if we think about it, to live wholesome lives, lives that are godly. As our flesh fights for control, it's a, it's a, there is a battle going on to fight temptation and to keep on the straight and narrow, as we say. But it's the spirit that steps in and helps us to be who God created us to be. And I would say everyone is created to be like an angel in your situation, where you live, in the problems that are presented every day, how we accept and approach and remain calm, even in the face of sickness and adversity, we still learn to remain calm through the power of the Spirit and show the goodness of God, even in difficult times, as Jesus did when he died on the cross. May God bless you. Have a lovely Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. Thank you.